After a week in which Donald Trump has been absolutely barbecued by the mainstream media, some of the harshest, the fiercest, the most searingly personal criticism has come from conservative commentators. Now, many of these folks didn't like Donald Trump in the primaries. They opposed him. They said he wasn't uh, fit for the presidency. And I had thought that once Trump won the nomination, you know, many of them would mute their criticism or perhaps say, you know, he's a very flawed candidate, but he's still preferable to Hillary Clinton. That hasn't happened. And we're in a moment now as Trump is seen by his detractors as uh, having screwed up, as not being able to stay on message, as making mistakes, attacking a gold star family, and of course, slipping in the polls, that I think many of these columnists and commentators and pontificators on the right are kind of having an I, I told you so moment. They're saying, not in so many words, but they're saying, we warned you against this guy. We said this would happen if you nominated him. And look what's happened. Now, I'm not endorsing any of this criticism, but as a phenomenon, I've never seen anything like it. It would be as if Hillary Clinton was getting hammered every day by the New York Times and Washington Post editorial page, uh, by Paul Krugman, Gene Robinson, the Huffington Post, The Nation, Salon. If the people who ordinarily would be her allies were instead among her harshest critics. I mean, just listen to some of this. Uh, David Brooks in the New York Times. Trump suffers from inflated self-esteem, sleeplessness, impulsivity, aggression, a compulsive, uh, a compulsion to uh, offer advice on subjects he knows nothing about. His speech patterns, says Brooks, are like something out of a psychiatric textbook. Charles Krauthammer, you've seen him on the air on Fox and in his uh, syndicated column, just ripping Trump. Trump is beyond narcissism, says Charles. I used to think he was an 11-year-old, an undeveloped schoolyard billing, but that was he was off by 10 years. He has an inf infantile hunger for approval and praise. George Will says Trump is practicing a kind of post-factual politics, and this is being normalized, and it's being injected or poisoning the bloodstream of Republicans who are backing him. Now, I could go on and on, and it's just... It's not just that they oppose Trump on ideological grounds. That's where I think this started. Many of these conservatives don't believe he's a real conservative. But it is just so visceral and so personal that you know whether they say so or not. This includes the National Review and Weekly Standard and Bill Kristol and others. And there are exceptions. I mean, he's got Laura Ingram and uh, mostly supportive comments from Laura Ingram who spoke at the Republican convention and Hugh Hewitt and some others. But it's so intensely personal that I wonder if Trump supporters just discount it. I mean, when he went after National Review and others during the primaries, a lot of people said, oh, these are just a bunch of pointy head intellectuals. They go to conferences, they go on cruises. They're not in touch with the real conservative voters. And maybe that's true. But it has left a situation where Trump it has very few defenders in the media, the people who would ordinarily be defending him, the people who ordinarily default to supporting the GOP nominee, now just can't say things that are harsh enough from their point of view against Trump. Maybe this all creates sympathy. Maybe this all shows uh, the people who support Donald Trump uh, that the press just won't cut him a break, even people who are supposedly on his side. But it's a, a distinguishing feature of this presidential campaign and one that I have never witnessed before.